Township Parsippany Troy Hills Township Council agenda meeting of April the 4th, 2023. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the open public meetings law by filing the notice in the office of the township clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the municipal building on December the 21st, 2022, where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the daily record and the Newark Star Ledger on December the 28th, 2022. Council meetings are videotaped and aired on cable vision, excuse me, public access 21 at 11 a.m. on Sundays and are also available for viewing at www.parsippany.net. Councilman DePiro, would you please lead us in this flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Karifi? Here. Mr. DePiro? Here. Mr. Musella? Here. Mr. Neglia? Here. Ms. Grignani? Here. Also in attendance are Mayor James Barbario, Business Administrator Jamie Cryan, Township Attorney Michael Lavery, and Municipal Clerk Colette Madden, Council President. We have a quorum. You may begin. Thank you. Upcoming meetings, April the 18th, 23, at 7 o'clock, we have a regular meeting. May 2nd at uh, 7 o'clock, we have an agenda meeting. Presentation of reports, Mayor. Yes, before I um, do the proclamations and presentations, I'd like to wish those uh, all that celebrate a happy Ramadan, a happy Passover, and a happy Easter. <laughs> As everybody is aware that when you walked in the town hall today, you saw a whole bunch of pinwheels and at the planter over there in the town, it's um, uh, the Women's Club, it's the um, Child uh, Abuse Prevention Month. So I have a proclamation here, Kiwanis too, right? All right, I didn't want to let you down, Frank. <laughs> there we go. Township of Parsippany Troy Hills Proclamation. Whereas our, our children are our most valuable resources and will shape the future of Parsippany Troy Hills. And whereas childhood drama, including abuse and neglect, is a serious problem affecting every segment of our community. And finding solutions requires input and action from everyone. And whereas childhood trauma can have a long-term psychological, emotional, and physical effect that have lasting consequences for victims of abuse. And whereas Protective factors are conditions that reduce and eliminate the risk and promote the social, emotional, and developmental well-being of children. And whereas effective child abuse prevention activities succeed because of the partnership created between child welfare professionals, education, health, community, and faith-based organizations, business, biz, law enforcement agencies, and families. And whereas we acknowledge that we must work together as a community in partnership to build awareness about child abuse and contribute to promote the social and emotional well-being of children and families in a safe, stable, and nurturing environment. Now, therefore, I, James R. Barbary, the mayor of the Township of Port Troy Hills, do hereby proclaim April 2023 as Child Abuse Prevention Month in the Township of Port Troy Hills and urge all, all of its citizens to recognize this month by dedicating ourselves to the task of improving the quality of life for all children and families dated this fourth day of April 2023. There you go, Ken. Two cameras, man. I don't want to look at. <laughs> there we go. That one first. One more. Thank you. 
Okay, now we have a proclamation for Karen De Christopher for the Sokolowski Senior Citizen of the Year Award. Whereas the Sokolowski Senior Citizen of the Year Award was created by the empowerment by Jean Sokolowski, who was a tireless volunteer dedicating her time to the McCulloch Hall of Museum in Morristown, the Daughters of the American Revolution, and other causes. And whereas the Sokolowski Senior Citizen of the Year Award recognizes a proximity resident of over 60 years old of age who demonstrates the power of making a difference in the community through volunteerism. And whereas Karen DeChristopher has selflessly volunteered her time, talents, and skills for over 20 years for, among others, the Parsippany OEM Emergency Response Team, Family Promise, Jersey Battle Women's Shelter, Kiwanis Club of Parsippany, Women's Club of Parsippany, and American Cancer Society, who I can tell you I worked with Karen on the American Cancer Society. Where in 2006, Karen joined the Parsippany CERT team and as a senior leader volunteered countless hours during Superstorm Sandy, Hurricane Irene, winter storms, flooding events, down electrical wires, and various other township emergencies and events. And whereas, as a three-time cancer survivor, she has volunteered her time to the American Cancer Society in the effort to help others battle the disease and her passion for volunteering in support of women's and children's causes is inspiring and affectionate. Now, therefore, I, James R. Barberia, the mayor of the township of Parsippany Troy Hills, do hereby present this proclamation on behalf of the residents of Parsippany Troy Hills as a token of respect and admiration for Karen DeChristopher, and urge the residents of our community to follow her example of service and accomplishment dated this fourth day of April 2023. Karen? Okay, what's next? Okay, Michelle, okay. I'd like to, on behalf of uh, the Office on Aging, I'd like to present Karen with this award for this, for your tireless volunteerism in the Township of Persephone. Congratulations. <laughs> Other side of camera. Okay. Oh. But you should be in the middle, that's right. On this one. Down this way, Like that whole crawl. One more. One more. Thank you. And I do want to thank you, Karen, because I know we've worked on many of the American Cancer Societies. And the reason why I say that is because um, when I first became the mayor in 2010, Karen knows the story. I didn't want to be involved with the American Cancer Society. I lost my 10-year-old brother when I was nine to a brain tumor, so we never, I always tried to stay away from it, never got involved, and I got to thank Karen and all those that got me involved, so thank you. Ready, Carl? <laughs> Come on, your turn. <laughs> I'm probably going to get yelled out by Nan somehow tonight. <laughs> so, yeah, is that? It? So I'm going to. All right. Uh, here we go. Make it sugar. And this is half the family, right? Yeah, that's part of wow. the Wow. Only half the whole I couldn't ask somebody to sit there. This proclamation, whereas the Sokolowski Senior Citizen of the Year Award was created by the endowment of Jean Sokolowski, who was a tireless volunteer, dedicating her time to the McCulloch Hall of Museum in Morristown, the Daughters of the American Revolution and other causes, and whereas Sokolowski Senior Citizen of the Year Award recognizes a Parsippany resident of over 60 years of age, and only 49, <laughs> who demonstrates the power of making a difference in the community through volunteerism, and whereas Carl Riffle has selflessly volunteered his time, talents, and skills for over 45 years. Among others, Lake Parsippany Property Owners Association, Girl Scouts of America, okay, the Parsimony PIL Color Guard 
and the Possibini Volta Ambulance Squad. And whereas Carl joined the Possibini Volta Ambulance Squad along with his with Nan in the effort to give back to the community and help wherever he was needed. Whether it was driving the ambulance, patient transport, moving equipment, or generally supporting the EMS team. And whereas Carl continues his volunteerism at the Parsimony Volta Ambulance Squad at the clubhouse, where he is known as the handyman providing upkeep and maintenance on the property. And I'm proud to say this because, you know, when I became the mayor, before I read this part, I'll never do the first thing your uh, wife said to me, stay in your lane. <laughs> and she really did. I'm not even kidding you. So. Now, therefore, I, James R. Barbera, the mayor of the township of Parsimony Troy Hills, to hereby present this proclamation on behalf of the residents of Parsimony Troy Hills as a token of respect and admiration for Carl Riffle and urge the residents of our community to follow his example of service and accomplishment. Dated this fourth day of April 2023. I used to be around. I see it Fourth of July. <laughs> All right. All right, Carl. Here you go. Here's your award from the Office on Aging. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yep. All right. More pictures. All right. Let's get rid of this. Oh. Yep. <laughs> yeah, get I know that's a actual camera. Somebody else is we graduated from the house watch. We needed more. We had more. I had another one. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, good to see you again. Yes. Congratulations. What's happening? All right. All right. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Congrats. All right, Council President. Township Council. Township Council. Are there any reports? I have a couple of items. Okay. Still waiting for a street dedication for Lee Carmel and Charlie Beatty. We're going to set up a date. We're going to do that. Yes, we will. I actually spoke to. Um, I'm sorry. I spoke to the engineer about getting the signs. So um, we should get them. I mean, the street signs. We should get them shortly. Okay. Thank you. And then our last meeting, I brought up Narcan training, which was offered by the sheriff's department, and recommended that. Um, the administration coordinate something township wide, and they would come over and do a, a training to us. I didn't hear about the training. Setting up an Arcan training. Oh, yeah, for an Arcan, right. Okay. Sorry, Councilman, I didn't hear you. I should wear my hearing aids. But okay, <laughs> we'll do that. That's all I had. Thank you. Township Attorney, Mr. Lavery. Uh, no report this evening, Council President. Business Administrator, Mr. Cryan. Thank you, Council President. Uh, real quickly, uh, just wanted to 
let the residents or remind the residents that um, we, uh, the Parsippany Recreation Department Summer Playground Program is is open for registration. Uh, we will be having an April on April 22nd a cleanup event uh, uh, on Earth Day, and the, that sign up will be on our website um, in the next few days. Um, also, uh, as Mayor said earlier, Happy Passover and Happy Easter to everyone. And uh, just a reminder, the township offices will be closed on Friday for Good Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Township clerk, Mr. Madden. Uh, no report, Council President. Thank you. Township offices committee reports. Any? Yes, Council President. Uh, this past Sunday, um, on behalf of the Environmental Advisory Committee, I went to go on a tour of a proposed environmental ed education center uh, at Troy Meadows. So they're going to be going uh, before the planning board to get approval for that. Okay. I also have something. Uh, the Parsippany Troy Hills Economic Development Committee will welcome a new chapter, Faith Based Recovery, at 1915 U.S. 46 East. On Monday, April the 17th at 12 noon, we have a ribbon cutting ceremony. The public is invited. The Economic Development Committee will meet on Wednesday, April the 5th at 6.30 at 90 East Halsey Road, third floor conference room. The public is invited. Please reserve with Frank Cahill at 973-559-6000. The Economic Development Committee released its second Meet the Merchants segment on Envy Sports Club inside the Sheridan Parsippany Hotel. The video is available on YouTube and Parsippany.net. There are no correspondence. Bids taken. One, March 29th, 2023. A 2023 road resurfacing curb and sidewalk program to be taken April the 5th, 2023, PARS 2201 High Service Redundant Pub Edition. Two, 41923 Booster Station and Well Facility Upgrades. There are no quotations, proposals, or qualifications. I'd like to entertain a motion to open the public hearing. Make a motion. Second. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karipi, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call, Mr. Karipi. Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Negria? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. Okay, the floor is open to the public. You can speak on any matter. You have five minutes to speak. <coughs> Good evening, Ken Dalsky, 21 Winfield Drive. Uh, I would like to talk to you tonight about uh, supporting the resolution that Mr. Homiak proposed regarding the phasing out of uh, gas-powered uh, leaf blowers. And I want to focus on air pollution and the effects of air pollution on people and especially on children. First, let me just give you one overall statistic. There was an article in Forbes that said that in 2015, there were 200,000 deaths in the United States from air pollution. Air pollution is a silent and an invisible killer. Nobody's death certificate says they died from air pollution, but it exacerbates almost any other kind of disease that you have and causes not only increased problems with that disease, but premature death. Exposure to air pollutants is linked to neurological cardiovascular and respiratory diseases such as COPD and asthma, cancer, premature death and birth defects, increased susceptibility to infections as well as damage to lungs, liver, kidneys, reproductive, nervous and cardiovascular systems, increases in obesity, diabetes, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia and stroke. Developing fetuses and children are uniquely vulnerable. I'm gonna repeat that, developing fetuses and children are uniquely vulnerable. So we're here tonight talking about preventing child abuse. Air pollution is a form of child abuse and is something that while we don't see it and we don't smell it and we don't taste it and we don't feel it, we need to understand what it's doing to us and to our children. Air pollution comes in sort of two flavors. One, there's the direct emissions of carcinogenic and toxic pollutants that we breathe 
And there's also other, other uh, effects, such as the combination of volatile organic chemicals and nitrogen oxide, which causes ozone. Ozone, in particular, is really deadly and causes uh, premature death. There was a recent report by Environment New Jersey cited a 2017 journal of the American Medical, Associa Medical Association study that said researchers examined more than 22 million deaths in the Medicare population from 2000 to 2012 and found that a 10 parts per billion rise in smog, smog pollution, ozone, increased the daily mortality rate by 0.5 percent, regardless of how low pollutant levels had been initially. Another cited research in the Harvard School of Public Health, which found that death rates for older Americans rise as air pollution increases, even when air pollution levels are below current national standards. While precipitate does not currently have the same level of air pollution as Newark, where one in four children have asthma due to particulate air pollution, Continuing to allow increased particulates and ozone pollution can put parsippany on the path to a similar situation. Basically, adding more fossil fuel pollution or continuing the levels that we have is like playing Russian roulette with your children's health. The American Lung Association in 2022 published its annual State of the Air report. They gave Morris County overall a rating of C for ozone exposure. Not bad, but not great. However, I can guarantee you that Parsippany, with all its highways that run right through the town and its population density, has got to be worse than the average of C for all of Morris County, or probably a D, if not an F. People in Parsippany are literally dying prematurely from air pollution. We should be controlling our pollution where we can to improve the health of all of our citizens. We can't do much about the traffic on the highways that go through our town, but we can do a lot about local sources of pollution, like gas blowing, uh, you know, gas uh, driven leaf blowers. So I urge you to consider that and think about it and support a resolution that will stop this from being a problem in our town. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Bob Venezzi. I live at 102 Brooklawn Drive. Um, about six months ago, the council passed the controversial Project Labor Agreement, or PLA, ordinance. One of the Morris County Commissioners attended several of the PLA ordinance meetings and spoke at each one in favor of PLAs during the, during the public sessions. At the time, I was not aware that various unions had contributed over $42,000 to this commissioner's 2022 primary and general election campaign funds. I believe that the public has a right to know if there's a potential conflict of interest when an elected official speaks out on an issue before the council, especially when that official is not a resident of Parsippany. So tonight, I'm asking this council to amend the rules for conducting the public session to require any elected official or candidate to office who wishes to speak during a public session to disclose whether he or she has received campaign contributions from the entity who will benefit from passage of an ordinance. Please do not re uh, respond to this proposal with silence. If you have misgivings about it, I'd like to know about them now. Otherwise, I see no reason why you would not pass this rule change. Thank you. Well, if I could just respond, I, I think there's re I don't think lawfully we could do that. I mean, I'll be happy to check for counsel and report back, but I, I don't know that we could vet, you know, potential candidates or members of elected office that come in here to speak on any particular issue. I mean, I'll certainly check on it, but the fact of the matter is they're required to 
disclose everything on their ELEP reports and those type of things. But, so it's a matter of public record. But I'll check. But I don't think we'd be able to do that. Can but you ask check. them? You know, when they get up and you know it's a public official, can you no. say, do you have? Well, you could. Yeah, you could certainly ask, but they wouldn't be required to answer that question. I'm just, you know, we can't make it a litmus test for them to be able to speak on the topic. <clears throat> it's pretty simple. All you need to do, Bob, is go on the New, New Jersey Election Commission. I so I, that's how I know we got right, and that's you know to to put, to say to a council member or uh, anybody else have you contributed it goes right on. Everything's reported uh, on the reports. You can go right online. It's simple to get it. You call the individual up, whoever you want to speak to, and then you, then you don't even have to ask them. You know, it's a, I can get anybody know until after I can get anybody's report. Speak that night. But I can get anybody's report, um, mm -hmm. and so could you. And I think that's what the council was saying. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, Bob. Next. Uh, Nicholas Homiak, uh, Lake Hiawatha. I'd like to thank Ken Dorsky. You know, Mayor Barberio, I had an eight-year-old son that died from cancer, and it caused me to be involved with, with an admission thing back when Frank Lautenberg was around, so... Uh, all right, I'm here tonight actually to uh, the No uh, Golf Course. You have it in your uh, master plan, the largest landscape in Persephone. Now, for over two years now, in fact, me and Ken Dolsky were at a meeting with Mr. Osner until he got bumped out by uh, Mr. Uh, Broncado. But they were supposed to uh, adopt a river-friendly program, and they were supposed to be green to the T was what they were supposed to have with their program. And the program makes you aware that there is a river there, that the landscape affects the river, and the people who golf on the golf course actually have a responsibility to that landscape. Now, for example, one of the things we propose uh, you bring it on the golf course, you take it off. Not only do you take it off your beer and alcohol, you walk around the, the, uh, wood, the wooded lots and you, the golfers use it for a, a trash dump. But anyway, if you had a rule, go on and you take it off and then you have color codes for the people who don't know, uh, you know what to do with it and you have a strict discipline, at least an attempt, to manage your waste at the golf course better. These are just some of the suggestions. The other ones, you could use a gardener, Rutgers Morris County gardener, to introduce native plants to the landscape. You go up there, it's full of barberry and knotweed and other things, but there are plants that, the, bar, the barberry's there because it's deer, res, deer resistant. There are native plants that are deer resistant. But recently on the golf course in Arbor Day's coming up in Persephone and we we should cancel Arbor Day for the amount of trees that they took down on an old golf course. And most of the trees that were taken down were not ash trees that were degraded by the ash borer. They were healthy oaks and beech trees. And the reason from me talking to a few people, they wanted to expand the lawn. So we're taking trees. Trees have never been more important for the carbon sequestration. They take carbon out of the air, they incorporate it into the wood, and they store it. So we're not being climate friendly, and we're not treating our largest landscape that we have appropriately and I think we can do better. I'm a doubting Thomas. I've been told, like I said, for over two years now, we're going to get into the river friendly. I don't believe them anymore. And I had a brief conversation with Joe. He doesn't even know anything about it. So I don't know if any of you know anything about it, but it, we were supposed to be participating in a river friendly program. And we were supposed to use it for you, you could use it to educate. When you go golfing, learn about the landscape too. Learn about the river. Learn about the native plants. You got that pond there on No West, and they filled it in with the, the basalt stone and everything. You could have uh, made a riparian 
area around that pond using native plants. It would have took a little bit of labor, but you got the parks and forestry people up there. You know where the parks and forestry people belong? They believe, belong in your Knoll Historic District. Go take a walk over there and take a look, and you'll find thousands of those little airport liquor bottles. You'll find plenty of vape products, and play, that area needs to be attended to. It, and I called the county, get this. The county says, oh, it's a historic property. You got to, uh, go to the historic organization, uh, your historic or it's a county road. Nick, 30 seconds. It's a county road. <clears throat> All right, but anyway, I want you to look into this, what happened to the river friendly program? And if you, if you want more information about it, I can s supply you with it. I have send, sent in the past what I thought were correspondence, but apparently anything I sent is not considered a correspondence. So. You know, I still to this day don't know what a correspondence is. But, uh, and you're on the environmental committee. If you want to, you know, contact me, we can talk further about the river front friendly program and what the heck ever happened to it. All right, thank you. Seeing no one else. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Town Council. Uh, my name is Sean Astorga. I'm 787 Tabor Road. Um, I'd first like to start by congratulating the two individuals who were honored earlier this evening. As many of you know, we I am the uh, CFO and co-owner of Happy Days Boutique, and on March 7th, my wife and I requested an amendment to the cannabis ordinance in, ordinance in Parsippany to allow recreational dispensaries in town. On March 21st, a resident of Parsippany and member of town council spoke against this, which is what I would like to address today because the opinions shared were based on a lack of understanding of the difference between the legal and illegal market, the difference between medical and recreational cannabis, which for the record, there is no difference from a product standpoint, and a lack of understanding of state laws and regulations. And while I respect every individual's opinion and their right to share it openly, clarification is needed, so I'm going to speak to direct quotes from those evenings. <coughs> The first quote I would like to speak to is this. At the last town council meeting, four entrepreneurs presented what I consider to be a weak case for revisiting the ordinance to allow retail cannabis businesses to operate in the township. Almost nothing was said about the benefits of purely recreational cannabis. This is a small point, but it was not for entrepreneurs. It was two, my wife and myself. The other two people are Persephone residents, one a teacher and one a small business owner who spoke in support of an amendment to the ordinance so that cannabis dispensaries can operate in Persephone and in support of our company, Happy Days Boutique. The entire conversation was about the benefits of purely recreational cannabis because the products sold recreationally are the same as those that are sold medically. This is what people get confused about. There are two markets, a legal regulated market and an illegal illicit market. The illegal market is what most people are really concerned with. This is scary drug dealers in back alleys like you see on TV. This is bad stuff people tend to reference when they talk about cannabis. The purpose of the legal market is to make the illegal market obsolete. The legal market has two branches, the medical branch and the recreational branch. The products sold both medically and recreationally are exactly the same. You can walk into a legal dispensary in New Jersey with no medical card and order product A. My wife, who has a medical card, can also walk into the same dispensary and order product A. And the only difference will be that as a medical patient, she is exempt from paying sales tax. You cannot separate the medical benefits from cannabis simply because it is sold at a recreational dispensary. The benefits of cannabis exist because within all of our bodies is something called the endocannabinoid system. This system regulates and controls a lot of our body critical bodily functions, such as learning and memory, emotional processing, sleep, temperature control, pain control, inflammatory and immune responses, and eating. Cannabinoids are compounds that are in can the cannabis plant. These bind with the system that is in your body and the receptors on in that system to give you the therapeutic effect. So it is clear the recreational and medical cannabis products are exactly the same thing. And the kicker is that having a medical card doesn't really make sense financially because the process to get one is costly and the tax savings you get don't offset the cost to get for the majority of people when you can purchase at a recreational dispensary. The second quote I'd like to address, a simple monetary gain is not enough to outweigh the, the potential dangers that come with recreational dispensaries. Potential dangers. 
what potential dangers? How are we defining this? I read this sentence and I actually get offended because it is making a broad assumption about an entire population of people who use cannabis safely and responsibly, some of whom are your family, your friends, your neighbors, and people in this room right now. And I understand why someone may feel concerned about undefined potential dangers, but I would ask you to consider where your beliefs that this is an issue came from. Because when I look at data and actual journal articles on the subject, here's what I found. 70% of New Jersey citizens voted in favor of recreational cannabis. That's a lot of people. 67% of Parsippany's residents voted in favor of recreational cannabis. That is also a lot of people. And this spans political parties, genders, and races. This is from a study posted in the Journal of Regional Science and Urban Economics titled, Not in My Backyard, Not So Fast, The Effects of Marijuana Legalization on Neighborhood Crime. Quote, receiving a dispensary in a neighborhood causes a reduction in crime. Specifically, an additional dispensary per 10,000 residents is associated with a reduction of 17 crimes per 10,000 residents per month. An additional dispensary is associated with roughly a 19% decline in crime. In addition to finding an overall reduction in crime when a dispensary is added to a neighborhood, we also find that there is some variation across crime categories. The effect is generally strongest for nonviolent crimes. Specific crimes most affected include criminal trespassing, public order crimes, criminal mischief, and simple assault. There are also reductions in violent crimes driven by a decrease in aggravated assault. Reductions in these crimes are consistent with disruption of the illicit markets and with a substitution away from alcohol use. You cannot believe a word I say, but these are statistics, and you cannot deny facts. I'm here to answer any questions that the council has or that the town members have regarding this subject and our business Happy Days Boutique. Thank you, and again, I'm proposing an amendment to the ordinance to allow Class 5 retailers to operate in Parsippany, as was voted on by 67% of the town's population. Thank you again, and good night. Thank you, Sean. Good evening. My name is Casara Grasso and I live on Tabor Road. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Happy Days Boutique. I'm here tonight because I'd like to clear up, clear up some misinformation that was said at previous town council meetings regarding cannabis dispensaries and my proposal to amend the ordinance to permit adult use retailers to operate in town. I'll begin with the following statement made on March 7th. Quote, the bottom line is that it's about the dollar. It's 2% that the township gets. But at what cost do we get that revenue at? While the financial gains are obvious, this statement downplays what we at Happy Days Boutique stand for as a company. And it also downplays our promise to Persephone and its residents. We previously outlined our five pillar community care program, which has a large budget dedicated to improving this town by aiding the homeless and impoverished, helping relieve hunger, ensuring public health and safety, providing social equity opportunities, and being an environmentally sustainable business. This is what Happy Days Boutique will strive to do for this community and that gets lost in this whole debate. Another comment states, and I quote, the applicants estimated that their proposed business would generate $160,000 per year in tax revenue for Persephone, but there was no mention of possible offsetting expenses if police oversight was required to monitor the business. This is incorrect because we publicly outlined our plans to have our own security team in place, and the fact of the matter is $160,000 is the only truth in this statement. This comment speaks to a lack of understanding of New Jersey's regulations regarding safety and security measures required to be a compliant state licensed dispensary. Happy Days Boutique is a private business just like a bank. We will employ our own security team which will consist of off-duty or retired police officers and have 24-7 video surveillance. We are solely responsible for our own security. Extra monitoring by the police would only be required if, for example, someone were to endanger our staff or vandalize our property. But these are circumstances that would require any business to enlist the help of the police, and it's no different than if a person vandalized any other retail establishment. My husband and I hold, hold, hold public health and safety in the highest regard, and the concerns being discussed here are about extreme outlier situations, not the safety and responsibility demonstrated by the majority of people who consume cannabis. It is true that a person can both be a law-abiding citizen that contributes to society and someone who enjoys recreational cannabis. It was also mentioned, and I quote, potential amendment to the ordinance would allow for the establishment of cannabis-friendly coffee shops or bars, intentionally or unintentionally. 
I expect that a significant percentage of patrons returning home from an establishment will be driving impaired. What's being referenced here is a consumption lounge. This speaks to a lack of understanding about what a dispensary actually is and what New Jersey state law allows. And I can describe exactly what occurs in the dispensary because I was previously employed at one. First, your state ID is your state issued ID is checked by security personnel in the holding area. Once your age is verified to be 21 or older, you enter the sales floor where a bud tender greets you and asks what type of product you're looking for. <clears throat> then you go to a register where the sales clerk verifies your age again. Product is brought to you and you pay. You leave the establishment, <laughs> go home, and that is where you can finally consume the product. No one is permitted to loiter around the property grounds and they are certainly not permitted to consume on site or in their car. Our security team and video surveillance will ensure this. To clarify further, consumption lounges and dispensaries are not one and the same. They are two totally different businesses with different operating requirements. Towns can vote in favor of dispensaries and vote against consumption lounges. We did not ask to open a consumption lounge, so this idea was prematurely brought into the discussion. Another comment stated that the benefits of medical cannabis were obvious, but that there wasn't a strong enough case for adult use. What's important to know is that the cannabis products that medical consumers buy at a dispensary are exactly the same products that recreational consumers purchase. Dispensaries in New Jersey that sell to both medical and recreational customers do not differentiate their product lines. Therefore, both types of users are reaping the same therapeutic benefits. There are many misconceptions that exist about cannabis, and I will continue to advocate for public education on the subject. I am again petitioning an amendment to allow cannabis retailers to operate in Persephone, as was voted on by 67% of its residents, so that Happy Days Boutique can serve this town and put its five pillar community care program into action. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. My name is Robert Hughes, uh, Iroquois Avenue, Lake Hiawatha. Uh, in regards to the cannabis dispensary, um, I'm 20 years clean and sober. Um, in 2019, I got my medical cord uh, because I, I had a hip replacement in 2016. I was on painkillers and it could have gone very badly. Um, so I use it at night to sleep when I'm home. Um, you know, I understand your concerns with the dispensary in town. Um, and these are just my feelings. You know, I don't have a sheet or anything. Um, the thing that brought big business to our town years ago was the major highways. Right now, there's no dispensaries in Morris County or Sussex County. You know, the closest one, I think, is down in Montclair. You know, so this is where people have to travel to. Uh, the type of people that come to dispensaries, they're not the bad guys. You know, people, normal people, you know, doctors, lawyers, teachers, you know, whoever, that want to use cannabis responsibly. Um, you were concerned, Mayor, with uh, cannabis in the schools. That's not the dispensary's fault. It's, you know, the state made it legal. You know, and, you know, there's, you can get marijuana anywhere. You know, it's I'm the only one in my group that goes to a dispensary, the people I know. Um, another concern, the smoke shops, the convenience stores. You know, they're selling the product Delta 8, which is just Delta 9 is, a, you know, recreational, medical, some molecule, whatever. Delta 8 is not regulated by the state, but it's being sold openly in all these stores. You know, which, you know, that's going to affect a young kid that can go in and just, you know, flash a light it's real quick to a kid that doesn't care. All right, so now they're buying this, this stuff that, you know, nobody regulates. You know, vapes cut with this or that. You know, the dispensaries give people who want to do it responsibly and legally a place to go. They don't have to go into a back alley. They don't have to go to, a, you know, a smoke shop and... You know, and smoke shops, you know, they're selling real marijuana, too. 
You know, there's ways about it. I don't know if anybody's heard of gifting. You know, there's you buy a glass jar for sixty dollars and they give you a gift. It's it's it's, it's, it's the world we live in now. Um, yeah, you know, it, it troubles me when I when I hear we can't hire new police this year because it's not in the budget. You know, and you know I I, I think I read that. I, you know, I, I might be wrong. You can correct me if I am. But, you know, officers. You know, retires, we replace them. But you know, why not hire? You know, we have, we have people coming in and robbing our houses and stealing our cars. You know, this extra money for the town. You know, like they, 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 they supply their own. Um, security, you know, it would be no burdens. You know, there's plenty of open spaces. You know, it doesn't have to be next to a schoolyard or you know, a church or, you know, there's vacant buildings that we can, you know, put one in. Um, ah, that that's what I have right now. You know, it's, I know, I think it's a win-win, but that's just my opinion. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I respond, Council President, and let somebody else? Please. <clears throat> so, let's start with the um, referendum that was passed. Yes, 67% of the residents here in Parsimony voted for cannabis. But what happened was, um, after it was voted on, the state took it over. In the infinite wisdom of the state of New Jersey, they light the fuse and then give it to the townships to decide because they couldn't make the decision on their own if it should be legal or not legal so they put the onus on the on the municipalities and they give you six categories of what you can do with marijuana okay so the state can't make a decision so they throw it on the townships and they put a lot of responsibility on the back of mayors and a lot of responsibility on the back of um, council members and elected officials um, with regards to my quotes that was just quoted again and I'll stand by the quote, um, I'm just a firm believer, it's not about marijuana, it's about the dollar. Because at the end of the day, as you heard, you know, we can profit approximately $160,000 um, with the 2% um, that they tax. Very similar to the, um, very, very similar to the hotel tax. Now let's get to the buying it illegally. Uh, well, the state, once again, they're taxing the daylights out of marijuana. So right now, you can probably get it much, 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 much cheaper in the black market. And so I don't know how that takes that off the table, because I don't think it does. Um, you're still going to have individuals go there, because they can get it much, much cheaper. Now, I did never said I was in favor of it. I never said I was against it. OK, but as a mayor, I do have a responsibility to the citizens uh, of Parsippany. Now, Bob, when I, when I spoke about uh, with regards to in the schools, I get that. You're not going to, even if it was legal or illegal, it doesn't matter. It's still going to be there, and we have to deal with that. But I am in charge of the police department. I'm the police director, and we do discuss it. And there's some things we can't discuss here because the laws restrict our own police officers to do what needs to be done. Um, and that's frustrating. Okay, very, very frustrating. Okay, so I'm not saying we're never going to have it in Parsippany. I'm not saying we're going to have it in Parsippany. What I'm saying, it's about the high, mighty dollar. That's what it's about. I don't care what anybody says. I'd say that every time. It's about who can make the money on it and who can't. Because you're going to see as this goes on, a select few of individuals are going to make the money as time goes on. Not the small shops that, that, that are going to want to be here in Parsippany. But there'll be a selected few. Okay? And I'm being honest about that and serious. Um, with that... I never said I was open to it, never said I was close to it. I get the whole revenue side of it. I get that it's going to be here eventually. I get that after the five years is up in the town, I'm sure the state in their infinite wisdom will finally come up with a rule that says marijuana is legal to have a dispensary in your town. Okay, so, and I think that's going to happen eventually. But what I also, what I also said is the fact that no one's going to convince me it's not about money. No one's going to convince me either that it's not also bad for certain individuals. Because for some individuals, marijuana is bad. But for others, it's an effective way of treating, you know, like you said, Bob, and the anxieties, whatever. I get all that. I, I truly do. But we're always giving these reports that only show one side. But there is another side. There's definitely another side to marijuana. 
okay, that we're not hearing here tonight and, and the studies and stuff like that. But that being said, since I was quoted tonight, I wasn't going to say anything. I had, to, I had to respond to the quote that I said, and I'll say it again, I'll continue to say it. Uh, the fact of the matter is this. The state controls everything right now. I believe that the state should either decide, just like they should decide on the leaf blowers. They decide, they should make the decisions, okay, with regard to that. They should make it statewide because they put a lot of burdens. And I was administrator in Tewksbury Township. I was administrator in Lebanon Township. And by the way, they struggled over this. This, these uh, six classes or five classes of marijuana distribution, warehousing, and all that kind of stuff here. Um, and, and you know, Bob, you're right. There's this probably is in proximity that would that would be perfect for a dispensary. Uh, that's away from residential that you know can can do all that stuff. I just don't know. I just don't know how we're going to get there as of right now. Uh, but that being said, you, you know. Uh, if you're going to quote me, and I'm going to I'm going to come back. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the bottom line, you know, I'm, I believe it's about the mighty dollar, and if it's if it's not, then I guess we won't take the hundred and sixty thousand dollars in revenue that we get if we have one. Yeah, I'd like to share my perspective, and I think um, you know the mayor definitely brings up some valid concerns about hearing the opposing side, and it's for that reason maybe we could commission a study, a uh, committee that is reflective of all of the viewpoints, the people that are in favor of it, the people that want to establish a business here in town, um, people from, you know, maybe our chief of police, people from uh, the PAL, so that way, you know, we're getting all of the perspectives and we're fleshing out the arguments because I believe that when we know better, we do better. And if we can educate the, the, the populations, particularly the people that have the concerns about um, reversing the adult use ban, uh, I think this could be a way to not make it acrimonious for the township to forge its own path uh, ahead because I, you know, my belief, I don't believe there is any logical basis to have the uh, adult use ban in place right now because every single day I drive on Route 46 and in between the two dealerships uh, I see a vacant retail storefront that in my eyes, it is, is a perfect location for a business like yours that can pay taxes, that would rejuvenate our corridor and, you know, would be aesthetically pleasing so as that way not to um, look uh, unseemly. And it's for that reason that I think maybe we should consider it and find well, if there's here, a, a rational way ahead. Here's what I'll say about that with regards to uh, storefronts being vacant. Well, we're going to be filling a lot of those storefronts up, number one. I do get what you're saying, Councilman. My only thing was, and I said it tonight, I'll say it again, uh, if we have a dispensary, I can live with it. That's not the issue. The issue is it's about money. It's about who can profit what and how they can profit it. And, and that's what it comes down to. Uh, and I get I get all that. I understand it. I understand, you know, you know we, we are in a crunch time. We have some situation that we have to deal with in the future. Um, I, if I had to give you my opinion, and I, I do like the statement that Robert made, and I know Robert for many years, if it helps somebody get off of um, being an alcoholic, then that's a good thing. Um, but that being said, I, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to form a committee with the chief and the police on it because they have their own restrictions. Um, but I, you know, I would open it. I would consider it. And uh, we, we, we can get to where we need to get, possibly, so. I'm sitting here and uh, the mayor made a comment about marijuana not being good for certain people. It may cause problems. Yeah, I know. Put your hands up. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking. You've already talked. Now I'm talking. Thank you. Yes, it is about the money, I feel, but it's all about, I feel, it's about the detriment to the young person. Having experienced the effects it has on young adults, on young people, and how it is a gateway drug, mm -hmm my opinion leads to other things leads to heroin 
leads to overuse, leads to death. I've experienced all that. You can form all the committees you want. My opinion is not going to be changed. No one else is speaking. No one else is speaking? I'd like to hear a motion to close the... Could the public speak I'll on make... this subject <clears throat> no. as a separate mm -mm. time limit? No, 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 no I'm cannot. sorry. All right, then. Motion to close the uh, public meeting, please. Motion. Make a motion. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Karifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Mr. Grignani? Yes. Door is closed. Council members, please look over our introductions and our second readings on public hearing. Are there any questions? Also, our consent agendas, if there are any questions. Mr. Neglia, please. Yes. Approval of payroll and bills list. CFO Leonard Ho recommends authorization for payment. Authorization payment of the April 14th, 2023 regular and miscellaneous payroll estimated at $1,650,000. Uh, payment of bills from vouchers list of 4123 through 4323 is $2,721,849.84. Motion to approve the authorization for payment above by myself. Second. Mike, Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Karifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Misella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. And Ms. Grignani? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call. Mr. Karifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Misella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. We're adjourned, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Mm -hmm.